Jeffrey's always had low self-esteem. Why wouldn't he? He wakes up late, he plays video games, and he jacks off three times a day. He struggles immensely to improve his habits. Adonis. Adonis' high self-esteem makes it fairly easy for him to pick up new self-improvement habits. He values himself. He loves himself unconditionally, and because of that, he improves himself naturally through habits like meditation, journaling, and exercise. Improve your self-esteem and then you'll find that you almost automatically start doing the good habits. You do the bad habits because you don't love yourself. Uh, but, 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 Hamza, uh, self-love is gay. Shut up, bro. Yeah, one of these days I'm gonna break my phone by doing that. <laughs> self-love is the secret to an easy self-improvement journey. A man cannot rise above how he sees himself. And so it's likely that you consider yourself a piece of shit. Your parents and friends in school treated you like a piece of shit. And now, oddly, you treat yourself very similar to how they treated you. Is that the best way to live life? We're going to put you on a plan for two weeks. For two weeks, you're going to have a huge focus on improving your self-esteem. We're going to make you love yourself. Now, how do you love yourself? You do things for your future self. You visualize your future self at the end of the day, ticking off all of the habits on your habit tracker. You visualize your future self with the body that you've worked hard for. But before all this, before you go and delay gratification, there's a very, very important task that has to be done. You have to do deep journaling. You have to dive deep into the reason why your self-esteem isn't as high as it could be. So do this journal prompt. What happened in my life that caused me to view myself not so highly? Answer that one in detail. It should take you at least half an hour. You should write down all the experiences that you can think of. How it made you feel, who it was. Write down as much detail as possible to the point that your finger starts to hurt. And then finally, answer this second journal prompt. Can I have unconditional love for myself no matter how anyone else has treated me? So I'm going to tell you a little bit of my story and my experience. I always saw myself as a bit of a loser. Even though I didn't truly want to believe it, it was in my mind that I was just the guy who played video games. This is, you know, back in high school. And so I acted like that and I stayed like that because I was just the guy who plays video games and the guy who, not even the guy, I'm just a little boy who finishes school, fast paces to walk home and then just so I can hop on to RuneScape and level up my cooking skill. Because I had this as my self-image, the self-image of a somewhat weak timid, pushover little boy who was addicted to video games. I never rose above that for a long time, up until my self-image changed. At one point, I dropped everything and started to view myself as a weightlifter. I started to view myself as one of those guys who were making the body transformation and they used to play video games and they couldn't hold eye contact with girls. But then they started lifting weights and packing on some, some muscle and then they could hold eye contact with girls. I started viewing myself as one of them. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened to me. So there's some things I've learned about frame that I'd like to teach you now, because this is what we're talking about here. If you're into the red pill, this is what we're talking about. Self-image, your self-perception, your self-esteem. We can say frame combines all of them attached with the rules and the playbook that you live by. If you think of yourself as weak, if you frame yourself as that weak, timid, pushover guy, that is the body language that you will convey to others. And when other people see that body language, they'll use it as a social cue to treat you that way. Because we use shortcuts to find out and interact with people around us. And frame is that shortcut. When someone frames themselves as a weak person, and their body language is weak. We look at their body language, we look at social cues, the body language, the status that they have, how much space that they take up, their voice, <clears throat> their voice, their deep voice. We use all everything we can because we want to have a picture of what someone is like almost instantly. 
because it makes us feel safer. And frame lets you hijack that and manipulate that picture. Well, in the long in the long run, it's not exactly manipulation because with best case scenario with frame is that you actually become that person. But if you're faking it till you make it, you do have like a bit of a transition period where you're being manipulative, but that's a separate idea. So if you wanted to find out if someone was weak, instead of having to go through the process of asking them if they've had any combat sport training, if they're in an MMA club, or instead of asking them about what's their status and their prestige is like in the job that they work we simply look at their body language bigger generally means stronger just in how much space they take but also how big they are and then we look at their eye contact so for the last like few seconds of this video i haven't really been making eye contact with the the camera and now i'm starting to go into like a slightly closed body language I bet I look a whole lot less like a leader right now than I do when I usually big dick it and spread my arms out wide and like sit back and talk with direction while lo looking at the camera, pretending I'm speaking to younger Hamza, who obviously I am the superior to. I view myself as bigger than younger Hamza. I see, look at the title of this video, I see myself as higher than I used to be and so I treat myself like this. When you struggle with self-improvement, especially if you're in the self-improvement struggle where you, the stage one I've mentioned before, where you are overindulging in the bad habits. It's usually, well, it changes per guy, but it's usually is something like video games and jacking off too much and taking some kind of substance. When you're stuck in this stage, it's because you think you're a piece of shit and you think that you could just slightly try and reduce your League of Legends time or you could stop smoking weed so much or you could, you know, oh, I'm, I've thrown away all of the junk food it's none of it's going to help all of the the real life stuff isn't going to help you because you think you're a piece of shit your problem isn't external the external world your overindulgence in instant gratification is just a symptom of how you view yourself a man cannot rise above how he sees himself you see yourself as that loser and so you treat yourself how you would imagine how other people would treat a video gamer with a level of disrespect. So here is a potential shortcut for your self-improvements. Focus first on your self-esteem, your self-image. Believe, truly believe that you are at least aligned with where you are. We're not trying to inflate it with affirmations. I, I am a, with the, with the power pose and we're not doing like any of the cringy self-improvement videos you might have seen with like a power pose and, and just stood in the toilet looking at yourself like, I am a confident guy. I am attractive. Shut up, bro. We're not doing any of that. Now, this is interesting because there's two ways we can look at this. We can say that your actions in the real life determine your self-image, or we could say that your self-image determines your actions. Taking some time to think about it, I'd say it's probably both. You're gonna feel like a loser. In fact, I was gonna say, you're going to feel like a loser if you jacked off seven times today. But you would jack off seven times today if you were a loser in your mind. Because if you truly thought of yourself as like a disciplined guy who's into productivity and who's into exercising, you wouldn't do that in the first place. Interesting. So how do you see yourself? What you perceive you're like is like a habit you've been building up for a while. It's the voice in your mind. That's your habit. That's your training. And we train this habit for many hours of the day. There is proof and research that visualizations can help with this, that if you visualize yourself at a point of success, you improve your self-image. I'm fairly new at this myself, so I won't actually try to give you much practical advice here other than just look into visualizations. And the book that I've started reading for this is titled Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. I'll have it linked in the description below. It's an affiliate link. I highly suggest you look into this book because this book actually has been recommended to me three or four times now. And it's one that I've never started reading up until just very recently, even though people have been recommending it to me for a couple of years. And it does seem profound. From my experience, I can support this argument. Your self-image determines how you behave and how the world seems to interact with you. And it's 
a somewhat easy and fast way to shortcut if you want other people to treat you better. Start by viewing yourself better because when you improve your frame, you improve your perception of yourself, you increase your standards and anyone who disrespects you, for example, or anyone who treats you as they would have before your self-improvement, you don't keep them around anymore. And so suddenly, what the f*** am I trying to say? And so suddenly, Sam, can you jump in here? What, what was I trying to say? You you can teach the boys, Sam. Go on. All right, boys. Now Sam's gonna Sam's gonna <laughs> just do my work for me and teach you all about self image. <laughs> <laughs> And so if you found yourself stuck at relatively the same place for a couple of months, it's likely that your self-image, how you view yourself, is holding you back. And you're going to have to focus on that first. That will come through the introspectiveness and perhaps learning more about self-image. If you want to see more videos by an unconventional small YouTuber, I suggest you scroll down right now and click on the post notification and the subscribe button. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it.